I could be the one guy up here who's not afraid to step out and say that the Claymores playing at home won, beat these guys two times, won all five of their games at home. I'm saying right now the Scottish Claymores kick butt, take names today. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Once again. I like that. All right, folks, we're having fun already. Coming up next, it's the 96 World Bowl. Will Frankfurt win their second title in as many years, as Terry says, or will Scotland, who had the best record during the regular season, follow that up with the victory today? It's all next, right here on Fox. For a millennia, the tattoo of the bagpipe has called Scotland's heroes to defend her land and her honor. A new challenge presents itself as a Germanic horde invades the Scottish Midlands. The Frankfurt Galaxy and the Scottish Claymores clash in World Bowl 96 as a season's worth of emotion and sweat will rise to a crescendo and determine who will conquer the world. It's the NFL's biggest day in Europe. The parties began earlier today and will continue late into the evening. All taking place outside Mirafield. Now we are in inside Mirafield in Edinburgh, Scotland. Fox TV Sports presents the championship game. The World League of American Football as Ernie Stautner's Frankfurt Galaxy will take on Jim Kreiner and the Scottish Claymore. Ernie Stautner, so much great success in the NFL. Defensive coordinator for the famed doomsday defense of the Dallas Cowboys. And for the second year in a row, he takes his team into the World Bowl. Facing the former coach at Iowa State, head man Jim Kreiner. He's had success at the college level. This year he is the World League of American Football Coach of the Year. Devin Hastings, a former captain of the National Rugby Squad here in Scotland. World Bowl 96, and we are underway. And they got Bailey back to the eight-yard line. He'll follow blockers as he takes it upfield. Moving beyond the 20, still on his feet to the 25. Picked up by Marcus Thomas, and this is a touchdown. But there's a flag down out there, I think. And our refereeing crew, led by Walt Coleman, an NFL referee, will bring his group back into the end zone to discuss the play. What a way to begin World Bowl 96. That's a touchdown. No flag. They're going to pick that thing up. Now, Scotland had been having problems in their special teams. Last week, they just got gashed on them. And so they went to work with them. And now you're going to see Mario Bailey finds his crack, and he just starts going. Now, at this point, you're running with your eyes. He sees something out to the left. George Coghill, 34, comes from behind, and as a good defensive back should do, slaps that thing loose. Marcus Thomas picks it up. It's six points. Extra point is up and in. You know, because of the limited size of rosters over here in this World League, most of all the defensive starters playing the special team. At the beginning of the game like this, when they're fresh, that's great. They get a guy like your starting strong safety, George Coghill, comes down. I mean, that's something the defensive back does all the time. And you're going to have to throw to get in. Evan Hastings will kick off again. And Bailey will get it on the fly at the three and hold on to it as securely as he can. He's tripped up and taken down. the 20-yard line, Marcus Thomas. And a grab, and Bailey, who's been a great receiver for quarterback Steve Pallor, will stay on the field. And there is Pallor, who has had a tremendous last couple weeks, probably right now, the number one rated quarterback in the World League. Yeah, and he's playing like that. I mean, he's going out there with confidence. He's relaxed. And I think that's the key with Steve Pallor. When he can get out there, just relax, find himself, he's got a lot of big plays. It'll be interesting to see how they react now and respond to what has been a unbelievable beginning. And on first down, he'll go right to work as Pallor locates 
his wide receiver, Jay Kearney. He's out by the 25 and close to a first down with the gain of eight. Banged out of play at the 28-yard line. Kearney is one of many weapons that Steve Pallor will be using today. As you see, Marcus Thomas, who just recovered the fumble on the kickoff, returned it 24 yards for the touchdown. Seibert, the national from Germany, West Bender from USC, Bailey and Kearney, the wideouts, and the tight end is Big Ed Smith. <laughs> Second down. Five to go with the penalty, and they swing it out on the wing, and it's caught by Baldy Phillips, the leading rusher, and he's knocked out of bounds, short of the first down at the 28-yard line. Bobby Phillips runs outside. He's allocated by the Minnesota Vikings. Here's the line now. The tackles Collins and Hegeman from the Dallas Cowboys. Baptiste also from Dallas, along with Terrell Green at the right side, and the center is the veteran Toby Mills. But for Steve Pallor at his own 28-yard line, and down 7 and upling to begin the game, and Pallor throws and he's got the first down pass to Ed Smith, tied in after the 35. Sees some big players, but it's a depleted line because of injuries. John DeWitt, Jeff Coat is the brother of Jim Jeff Coat, Joe Bryan, and then David Webb on the right side. That is the four down line. Pelour had gone in a four-game slump with the team. No touchdown passes, seven interceptions. They yanked him, put in the young kid, Brad Bretz, who had been in the Dallas and Washington camps. Bretz goes down with the bad knee. Pelour gets redemption, comes back in, and he's been on fire the last couple weeks. He really has. You know, it's funny when you talk to the players and the coaches, what's been the biggest difference? They say, simple, his mother-in-law and his wife went home. He can finally play football again. 7-0, Scotland on top as they return the opening kickoff on a fumble, 24 yards. For a touchdown and Seibert up the middle. In goes Seibert down to the 42 and a gain of eight on first down. You know, the funny thing, when I'm watching this Frankfurt team, the one guy that stands out and reminds me very much of San Francisco's Billy Ring is Ingo Seibert. Now, he's a national player. He's a German native, but he's got that Bill Ring kind of thing of making a play. I mean, you can always count on him. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. He'll block for you. It's not the shiftiest guy, but he'll grunt his way for eight or nine yards. Pelour's led a nice drive downfield, began about the 20-yard line, and now he's at the 40-yard line of Scotland with the first down and ten. And play action on first down with the rush from the blind side. Hit as he throws and throws to Gary Hill. He's down the at 17 to the 21. Nice play action. You know, what you're getting right now out of Frankfurt is what Steve Pelour can give you in this league, and hopefully what he hopes is in the National Football League. See, what he does is he can settle people down and go back and rely on the experience. You're down 7 nothing. come out and take what that defense is giving you. you see, he sets his feet, he looks the defense over, pulls the safety over with the look, hits the out in front of the corner. Gary Harrell from the... New York Giants, first down, 10 yards to go from the 21, handoff. And they give it to West Bender. And Bender picks up about five yards to the 16, so they follow an 18-yard gain with the gain of five on a running play to West Bender. Frankfurt is in the white, orange, and purple, and here comes the blitz, and they go the end around to Kearney, and a block from Pelour will open him up. He's got to get inside the 10, and he does. Inside the five, and a touchdown. Tell you who made that whole play was Pelor. Great block. He did, he did the perfect thing. I mean, the defensive end got out there, contained the thing. Pelor made it, had to get him to the ground. He got his job done, and Kearney did the rest of his way. That's a lot to ask in this league for a 34 year old quarterback who's trying to get a comeback in the NFL. Number nine is Ralph Kleinman. That would be Herr Kleinman. And a Kleinman from the Cologne Crocodiles. In Germany. Trying to tie the game at seven, which he does. We're tied at seven apiece, 8.33 remaining in the first quarter. There's a third down now for quarterback Jim Ballard, who is hit and brought down a sack. Playing a fumble on the play back at the 41, which is recovered by Scotland. The sack was by 90. Don Reynolds out of the University of Virginia. And that's his fifth sack of the season, and Ballard is forced to eat it, and the defense of Frankfurt forces the punt. That's the end of the first quarter as we break away after one from Edinburgh, Scotland. Side at seven, the Claymores in the Galaxy.
with Matt Millen, Kevin Harlan, the third member of our crew is on the sideline, the All-Pro from the Kansas City Chiefs, Bill Moss. Bill, good evening. Hey, Kevin, glad to join you guys finally. You know, two things I find interesting down here is one, yesterday James Fuller told us that special teams are going to be the key for Scotland, and ironically, in the first 11 seconds, they scored a touchdown off it. And two, Frankfurt Galaxy has run the ball more in the first quarter than they have in the last three ballgames. I'm very impressed with what they're doing. Back up to you guys. Yeah, the receiver. That could mean Yo Murphy, who had a good game last week in Spain. Murphy, one of the top receivers in the league. He's out of the University of Idaho. Third down and long. They've got to get to the 12, and the pass is overthrown. Looks like he got hurt. That's La Chapelle. At the 23. It, yeah, it looked, like, it looked like in the middle of his route, he pulled up. Maybe, I don't know what, it looks like he pulled muscle or something. Groin or hammy or something. Well, first thing you'll see is Ballard has the time, and that's a key. See right there, you see how he was running and he just kind of stumbled? That's a groin. Injury timeout. Pretty good third down team, third and 10 for Pelour, who gets a block. Oh, he's got whacked as he throws, and that's it's a fluttering oh! pass at the spot by Harrell, and he's down to the one. David Wilson would like to bite his hands off. Gary Harrell caught a ball that was floating down the middle and outdueled everybody else, picks up 29. It's first down and goal to go, Frankfurt. Don't be surprised to see Pelour use his feet to get himself out of trouble here. One is Harrell, and he's got four receivers deployed, and into the end zone, the pass oh, nice. is caught for the touchdown, brought down by Mario Bailey, number 81 from the University of Washington. And they're going to get Bellamy, 84, I believe, for taunting. Kleinman splits them, 14 to 7, Frankfurt. Frankfurt's won two consecutive games they've had to to stay alive, and they're in the World Bowl for a second consecutive year. And Mario Bailey comes up with a two-yard touchdown catch. He puts his galaxy on top by seven. Frankfurt on top, 14-7 to with Matt Millen and Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan, Edinburgh, Scotland, where it is just now 7 o'clock and stays light here until about midnight. We're so far north. Bill Moss, what do you have? Guys, third down and a yard to go. They've got to get just near the 40. Ballard dumps it off. Stacy's got the catch and he's got the first down and he's to the 45. It's down in 10 yards to go for quarterback Jim Ballard. Going deep and he wants the quick hitter and he's got the receiver and the catch is made. Yo Murphy. That should be one. six. I don't think he was touched. I think Joe Murphy scored six, but they're going to mark him on the one yard line. That's a huge play. That's even bigger because Ballard had somebody right in his face as that ball was let go. Say, I like this kid, Ballard. Watch Murphy. He's going to run the deep bait route. He's going to take him. Now break back to the inside. Ball is thrown. Now watch. See if he's touched before he gets into the end zone. There's a touch. That's a touchdown. Nobody touched down. Nobody touched him until he was in the end zone. That should have been six. As it is, they're marking it on the one yard line. First and goal from the six. Ballard guns it oh, up. Yeah. He's got the touchdown. Yo Murphy has it. Now that was a chance that Ballard took. He saw it and he put some mustard on that thing. And Murphy came down with six points. You lose your best player, La Chapelle, with a groin and an ankle. Somebody's got to step it up. Yo Murphy's stepping it up. And he's had a pretty good day. Hey, not bad. Three catches, 50 yards to score. Really, shouldn't even that one shouldn't even matter because he scored earlier, which they didn't call. Right. Gavin Hastings will miss the extra point. Wide right. So it is not a tie game. And Scotland trails by one. Uh, to put together their 96 teams back in the States. And the kickoff returned by Mike Bellamy. And it's a loose ball. And that's covered Scotland by Scotland ball. at the 15 yard line. Second time on the kickoff that Frankfurt has fumbled the ball. One time returned for a touchdown. This may cost them a touchdown. That's Shannon Jones who got that one. Remember I talked about not having the huge numbers on your roster, so your starters have to play special teams. Jones comes up with this one. Looked like the ball just came out of Bellamy's hand. It, it just popped loose. 
And then it bounced off a couple of people, and Shannon Jones comes up with it at the end. On the 16, third down and 11, trying to get in for more points. And into the end. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. What a catch. Now, you only need one foot in in the World League, and that's exactly what he got in, and that is as good a catch as you'll see. Hey, I, I don't care if you got to have no feet in. <laughs> that catch was a great one. I mean, that was a one-hander on a hot and spicy ball that was thrown out there. Yo, Murphy, just, boy, what a tremendous cat. That's great football. I don't care if that's Jerry Rice or Michael Irvin or anybody. Yo, Murphy, just put on a clinic for that thing. I watched Murphy at the top of your screen. Going to work the DB. Watch him. Breaks him inside. Now he's going to take Chris Hall back outside. Hall goes for the ball. There's your mistake. Here's your opportunity. Watch this. Unbelievable. And that is a score. And he got, he actually got both feet inbound. But the question was right. whether he had control or not. There's the catch. There's the touch. That's, great a, great, catch. that's a great catch. Five for two. They lead by five, and down he goes. And the ball is thrown away, incomplete, so wipe it away. And Scotland with eight seconds remaining in the first half, leading 19 to 14. So they're trying to get back on track. What they've done now is they missed two extra points, and they lead by five. And over Nighthawks, one of some 800 teams that consists of over 45,000 players that play amateur football here in York. And Harold to the 30, back pedal to the 29, and that ends the first half. So Steve Pallour has got some catching up to do. He did not get the ball late in the second quarter, and Scotland takes advantage of a couple turnovers, and Yo Murphy with two touchdown catches. We're at the half. We're back at the Robo after these messages from your local station. Back here at Stateside, halftime of the World Bowl contest. John, Howie, Terry, JB, the score at halftime. Yep, Terry's called it. At the half, Scotland leads it 19-14 over the Galaxy. Let's go to our highlights. Excitement. Scott, hey, Scottish Claymore fans are fired up. There's Sir Rand Stacy, leading rusher in the World League, coming out thinking the Galaxy says, hey, we're going to take you twice. Opening kickoff, Mario Bailey takes the ball, and he will head straight up the field. JB, check it out. Up the field. I, I said up the field. Now, there's the hit by George Coghill. Marcus Thomas picks the ball out of there. He rumbles for a touchdown, and the Claymores are up by seven. Back comes Jay Kearney on a reverse from a handoff from Pallor, who also throws a key block, 16-yard touchdown. Seven all, we're tied. Now, deep down the field. There it is. Yo, Murphy, 38-yard reception. <laughs> he also, Yo, Murphy makes the TD reception. And now back from the Frankfurt Galaxies. There's the fumble. This all happens in a minute, 30 seconds. Claymores have it. Now back down, Mo Murphy to the post, to the corner, John. There it is, ball up in the air. Yo, Murphy, touchdown. There you go, extra point, 19 to 14, went for two, didn't make it, and the Claymores, hard to beat them when you're playing at home. You know what I mean, JB? They shortened that name up for you, didn't they? Hey, honest to God, that's his name. Yo, Yo Murphy. Murphy. Let's go to the coach and ask him, what did you like about the first half? Well, you know, I was I was impressed with the feeling. You know, you could feel that, that this is a championship game, and I was impressed with Jim Ballard there at the end, the way that he stood in there, because that one he threw to Yo Murphy, he really took a shot. The thing that is disappointing to me is, is the tackling. I mean, the fundamentals are not good. There was as many missed tackles in that first half as I've seen in a long time. Yeah, and t the intensity in the game lends to, number one, it's a championship game. Number two, this is their last shot at impressing NFL scouts. And these are the guys that teams are going to be able to fit into the cap. Yo Murphy, we're looking for Sean LaChapelle. He pulls a groin. I think he's done enough during the season to impress Kansas City. But Yo Murphy has stepped up all of a sudden with two touchdowns. And you're right quarterback has played well hung in there on that big TD play. yeah Matt, what was that was my, that an out post corner that was a post corner the corner and then the corner came up or Thank whatever God, yeah. Bianca Batuka's not and playing if you're ever in, yeah if you're ever in trouble you always look for yo Murphy yo, <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> yo run the post they yeah. got they've got John yeah, Madden you know. in the zoo as well unbelievable some of the beautiful Scottish countryside Loch Ness actually and I don't see any monster there but nonetheless we've had a great game inside Muirfield in Edinburgh, Scotland. 
And because of a couple of Frankfurt fumbles, Scotland has taken advantage of them and they've gone on top 19 to 14 with Matt Millen, Kevin Harlan. Interesting game, and we've seen some tremendous individual performances so far. Well, Yo Murphy is the guy. I mean, Yo Murphy's made some catches, and Jim Ballard, the quarterback, hasn't wasted any time finding it. Hey, guys, I'm standing here with Steve Fuller. Steve, any big changes at halftime? I don't think so. I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing and, uh, you know, keep driving the ball. I don't think they've stopped us a whole lot. We've stopped ourselves a lot, so we just got to keep working. First down and 10. 19-14. Claymores, the team with the ball, leading by five. A little play action, a little waggle by the quarterback, and he gets the pass out to the tight end, Willie Ted. He fumbles the ball, Scotty Cooper. It's picked up by Cooper, the national player, and he takes it all the way to the 36-yard line. Scott Cooper had been running a deep end to clear out that area. And then as they ran Willie Tate across the field, Cooper was still behind him. You're going to watch as Cooper, 85, is going to stay inside. Now you dump back outside to the top. You see Cooper at the top of the screen. He was trying to clear out that quadrant. Ball pops up. Cooper's right there because he's doing the right thing coming back to the ball. McCallum, the kicker. Out of Canada will try one from 30, 36 yards. First field goal attempt. So on the Willie Tate hole, oh, the kick, kick is good from 36 yards away by Paul McCallum. Man, he killed that sucker. He had another 20 yards in that thing. Interestingly enough, he kicked a 46-yard field goal earlier in the season, McCallum did, to beat Frankfurt for Scotland. He's just given him a nice 22-14 to 14 lead. Week five, the Claymore's defense dominated on the road, shutting down and shutting out Frankfurt's supernova offense. Jim Kreider's squad celebrated a World Bowl berth with a 20 nothing victory. The Galaxy looked for revenge week seven in Scotland with less than a minute left. They tied it at 17, but with one second on the clock, Paul McCallum kicked the game-winning 46-yard field goal. And McCallum just kicked another 46-yard field goal with 8-14 remaining in the third quarter. Play clock is at six. Palour is faced with the first and ten from the 32-yard line. And looking for Bailey. Oh, what down. a catch! And it is a That's good. touchdown. Yes, sir. Boy, they found Mario Bailey in a hurry. He has been the whole offense here in this third quarter. Went right down the field in this series. He's not a big guy. 165, 170 pounds. He five can nine. run 5'9", but he's tough. And he wants the ball. We will try for the two-point conversion. He's deployed two receivers to the bottom of your screen. Here they got a motion. Lure on the two-point conversion, and it's almost picked off and incomplete. Oh, they got some pressure. Bellamy back un underneath. In the touchdown, though, this was all Mario Bailey. Watch Pelor season, he knows he has a man up, throws that ball deep over the shoulder catch, watch the concentration, fingertips, one foot is in, that's all that's required, and that's six. We have seen some great catches today. Really have. Now, this one would not have worked in the NFL, but watch the Willie Mays over the shoulder catch. Look at this. That's beautiful. One foot was in, one foot was out. You need one in this league. He beats Fuller at six points. Mario Bailey today, four catches, two touchdowns, and he brings the Galaxy to within two with that long 32-yard touchdown reception. Now, on the two-point conversion, they tried to go with the pick. Between a very strong season of success for the World League of American Football this year. First and ten, Ballard right to work, and he's got a receiver. That's it. Yeah, Murphy, he's got a touchdown, his third of the day. John LaChapelle could not be happier for Yo Murphy. We talked about it earlier. Somebody was going to have to step up. Who is it going to be? Yo Murphy said me. Third touchdown of the day. This one, he just uses speed. Ballard throws the ball perfectly. Catches in stride up the sideline. Touchdown. 71 yards on the touchdown catch. Murphy, his third touchdown reception today. 
131 yards receiving total for Murphy. And the extra point by Hastings, and it is no good. His second miss in as many tries. This is the extra point. Jim Ballard did not miss on Yo Murphy. A World Bowl record, 137 yards for Yo Murphy. This one puts the Claymores up by eight. And that's the way kilts are supposed to look. Instead of those hairy legs that I've been it looking at. It does not look that way on you. It never, you'll never <laughs> see one on me, believe me. Third quarter winding up here in Edinburgh. The Claymore is on top, 28 to 20. Now this word from your local stations. Now this is, you know, Scott Cooper would know more to make sure he gets past that first down mark. He has to lay out, he comes back to the ball. It's a nice catch, but it's short and sets a fourth down. And a yard. Uh, this fourth down. This one is the one. First down and ten. Stacy on the pitch. Doesn't like what he sees left. Fumble. Fumbles it for the fourth time today, and it's a loose ball. And they have not signaled yet. Well, they blow it down. I do not see an official pointing to the ground, which means that's a live ball and it should be a fumble. That that's going the other way. Stacy knew he had nowhere to run. You don't check an effort at this point. You just get down. I mean, Barry Sanders gets to this position, you're covered, get down to the ground, protect the ball. Here he tries to pick up another half a yard, and the ball pops out. And Johnny Dixon picks it up, and it's a over recover, going the other way. Allure trying to take advantage, his team's down by eight. We're early in the fourth, and the handoff goes to the Vikings, Bobby Phillips, who cuts the corner and wins his way in the He picks up six on first out. Look at Saran right there. Bobby Phillips is a player I think Franklin should use more. That time. I'll look that ball. I mean, the, obviously, the last game of the season is a little tough. But Bobby Phillips has that Dave Meggett kind of look about him. He's got the quick feet, he catches the ball well out of the backfield. He'll go downfield, he'll run the ball quick, he likes to get to the outside. I think they need to integrate him more into their offense. But he got it back down quick. Second down, 14, Fuller goes down. He eats the ball and coming through was Brian Proby, the Arizona State Wildcat, or uh, out of the Kansas City Chiefs allocation program. It's a nice pass rush by Proby. Now it's third down. And Kalur's got to get to the 44, and he'll go to the air, and he locates Hick. The interception pulled down by James Fuller, number 20 from Portland State, and he's brought down by Gary Hill and Steve Kalur, and has turned it over with an interception for the first time today. And the whole thing is set up by the holding call. Third down, about two and a half. Good Nelly. And they try the fake, and it goes back to the quarterback who throws downfield, and it's incomplete to Ron Dickerson. Wow. <laughs> they tried the flea flicker. They stayed with the coverage all the way. I'll tell you, Scott Cooper makes a heck of an effort to get the ball back to Ballard to make this throw. To Stacy, to Cooper, he's about to get waxed, and he throws it back, and Ballard is able to make this throw, but the coverage is downfield. That ball touched about everybody as far in this league. So four points becomes pretty big when you think about it being an eight-point game right now. Well, this would be two touchdowns instead of a touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Willie Tate, the tight end, will hold for Paul McCallum from the CFL, and he's got the angle. Does he have the distance? Oh! That's four points on a 50-yard field goal by Paul McCallum. Thirty-two to twenty, the Scottish Claymores in World Bowl ninety-six. 
I tell you, you get to a game over here, it's like you go to a party and a game breaks out. <laughs> they they have a blast over here. I mean, they warned me when I got here that Frankfurt was going to be amazing, and it was. And I didn't believe myself. That's going to be like you know one of the big games in the states. It's not even close. These people come to have a blast. Defensive coordinator playing mostly zone now. What he wants is for Pelur to throw it underneath, and then you come up and make the tackle. That time they did throw it underneath, and they picked up the first. Mario Bailey scrambles for the first down, picking up 11. First and 10 from the 46, and once again, Pelur operating out of the gun. And he's got Harrell, who is out of bounds at the 38. First and 10, Pelora fields a bad snap, takes a whipping as he throws to the near side, and the pass is caught. That's Bellamy, first down, a gain of 11, and the clock continues to go at 340. That's first and 10 from the 25. And Pelora finds another wide receiver. He's at the 20, and he picks up Bellamy, who gains six yards. Still in great shape. Now the field starts to shrink, and it starts to work against you. Defenses can be a little bit tighter in their coverage. Second down, three, Pelour. He has him again. Kearney this time, and out of bounds. Wisely with the first down in tow to the 11 in a late flag, and another one. Four of five, Pelour on this drive. First and goal from the five, and Pelour with all kinds of time to throw. Hits this. Receiver for the touchdown, Mike Bellamy. His first Mike touchdown Bellamy. of the year. Now it is a 32 to 26 game and 250. Remains on the fourth quarter clock. And Floor was patient, Floor had time. In that whole drive, he was five for six. Look at his time. I mean, he could read War and Peace and still get this ball off. Pelour with another touchdown pass today. He's got three of them. 250 remains in the game, and the Galaxy closing the door down now by just five, 32 to 27. And the quick pass to the far side. Yo Murphy runs and gets the first down. Now watch at the end of this play. He knows he can go out of bounds, but he doesn't. So he goes down, takes a slide, forces Frankfurt to have to use the timeout. First down and 10 because of Murphy, and they're out at the 35-yard line. Siran Stacy. Now, you got to think about him, and he has fumbled four times today, but he slants his way for a gain of about three. Another timeout taken by Frankfurt, so they are out of timeouts. And again, trying to get that extra timeout with the two-minute warning. And he has opened some eyes, I'm sure, today in the NFL with his performance. That ball's batted down on that second down pass. It'll be third down, and right in the way was Bernard Carter. And Bernard Carter got that hand up. Not that thing down. And Scotland's pointing at Frankfurt. We have illegal defense on illegal. the previous play. Five yards Italy. It's a big penalty. It's still be second day. Oh, but forget the penalty is five yards, but it's still second What's down. The They're calling an illegal defense. What's the call? What? What was an illegal defense? What was an illegal defense? <laughs> the old press box call. They call it from the press box. You know, that's exactly what you don't want to hear. You want an answer on the field. Absolutely. Hey, you're going to make the call. Be responsible. Stand up for it. Don't say, hey, we don't know. It was from the press box. Second down, two yards to go. You still have third down. You're going to waste what Ernie was working for, getting the timeout with the two-minute warning. Siran Stacy does not get the first down. So it'll be third and one, and we've reached the two-minute warning. And the ball is blown dead. And Curtis Cotton can run from here to Frankfurt, and they're not going to call it a touchdown. So the two-minute warning, it'll be third down and a yard. The team with the ball, the Scottish Claymores, with a 32-27 uh, to 27 lead over the Frankfurt Galaxy. Scotland has not been a very good third down team today. Four for 12. They've got to get to the 45. They're inside the 44. Ballard rolls out of the pocket. Gets a great block from Dickerson. Hit as he throws. And the pass is... Incomplete. Incomplete at the 41-yard line. 
They were going to Yo Murphy. What a gutsy call that was. They only needed a yard. Well, you're going to try to cross them up. They're going to try with play action. They went with the roll. Cavallo makes the play. He forces them to pull up. Murphy had beaten them. But then Johnny Dixon got the arm in there. They'll be punting to Gary Harrell of the New York Giants. Calls for the fair catch, stopping the clock at 145 as he goes to a knee. And he's down at the 27-yard line. Well, 45 remaining in the game. Now they have to score the six points. He's down in 10. On the 27, Palour in the gun. He sends Harrell in motion. Four receivers for Palour. On first and 10 to the sideline, and he's got the receiver, Bailey. Stops the clock, gets the phone to keep the clock going. The 38-yard line, we're down to 133. First and 10 from the 38. Palour again with the four wide receivers, and he throws... A completed pass. It's not good for a first down. He picks up six on the play as Mario Bailey picks it up again. Second down and four. Pelour to Bailey. Over his head. Incomplete. Clock stopped at 59 seconds. That's Thirty-two twenty-seven. They've got the ball. They've got it third and nine. They've got to get to the 48. Pelour, good time, has Bailey, has the first down if the... Well, they're keeping the clock running. Clock goes, they get to the 48, they have not signaled a first down yet. And it's not a first down. They have not given a first down. And about a foot. About the length of the football. Clock at 33 seconds and a bad snap to Pelour. And then it was picked up by the running back. And that was Seibert who gets the first down. Boy, that was a heads up play. No timeouts for Frankfurt. And they're stopping the clock for what reason? At 19 seconds, they're stopping the clock. And now the referees will confer. And we have a fourth down. In goes Seibert, carried the ball on a snap to Pelour that was muffed. The ball is snapped before Pelour is ready. Seibert picks it up. He's not down. Keep going. Ball's fine. Now he's hit. I'm not understanding what I'm seeing here. No, no, that's, that shouldn't be. But that's what they're saying because they're moving the ball where the knee went down at the 40-yard line. And I'm not going to see a single thing. Any time you can't advance the fumble in the last two minutes of the ball game. Can't advance the fumble the last two minutes of the game. That so would it be, goes below. That's the old Raider rule. That goes back. To, that's the Dave Casper Casper rule. when he kicked the ball ahead. That's right. But I never saw it applied like that. That's the Once game. you fumble the ball, you have to recover the ball. Now they're saying that a bad snap is a fumble. And that's what I would dispute. Pelour was under center. The ball goes through his leg. Right. Cyber is in the backfield. Gets the ball. When he gets the loose ball, he goes down on the knee. They they're up. saying that that was a fumble. And if it is a fumble at the end of the game, then the guy who fumbled it has to also recover it. They're saying Pelour fumbled it, but he never had the ball. They're saying that a bad snap is the fumble. <laughs> We go downstairs to a victorious Jim Kreiner with our Bill Moss. Coach, congratulations on the World Bowl Championship. A far cry from your... Players and the coaches and the kind of job that they did. Tremendous effort by our football team today, and I'm very, very proud of them. Congratulations on World Bowl Champions. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's go enjoy it with your team. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Final score is 32-27. And James Brown, an interesting ending to this World Bowl 96 as Scotland is the champion, winning 32-27.
That it was, Kevin, but a perfect season at home for the Scottish Claymore. 6-0 at home this season, a complete turnaround from last season when they were 0-5 at home. John, you were smiling when Matt was talking about that Dave Casper play. You were coaching there. Yeah, I never thought that the game that we played, it was in 1978 against the San Diego Chargers. We had no timeout. Kenny Stabler fumbles the ball. Now he knows he has no timeout. Pete Banizak goes to pick it up, but he knows if he picks it up, he's going to get it, so he can't pick it up, so he fumbles it. Dave Casper finally gets it about the one-yard line. He knows if he picks it up there, the game's over. He fumbles it into the end zone and drops on it. So we, we score a touchdown. We win the game. So then they put the rule in that the guy that fumbles on fourth down can't, is the only guy that can recover his own fumble. A good, you know what a, I mean. A good, solid play. That's a good, solid play. It's a good, solid rule that you know we were part of. And here, years later, we see it in the World Bowl. Lo a, and behold. Yes, what a neat game. We see we see a World Bowl record crowd come into Edinburgh today. A really competitive football game. Congratulations to the Claymores. The team I knew that would win. You called it at the top. John designed that play, that fumble play. I like that. All right, folks. Bet on we've that. got more coming your way with the World Bowl presentation. The world 96 winners, the Scottish Claymores, will do all of that after this. Yo Murphy took it over. Jim Ballard had the presence to be able to find him. Murphy made some acrobatic catches. We saw the one-handed catch as well as the 70-yarder, and he was the difference for the Frank for the uh, Scottish offense in the second half. Once again, let's look at what we think is as good a catch as we've seen all season long. Off the throw of Jim Ballard, who threw three touchdowns and all to Murphy today. Well, I got to tell you something. You can look in a bunch of different seasons. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm talking all the, that's as fine a catch as you're ever going to see right there. And Yo Murphy put the period on his MVP game. So you were telling me all along you were waiting to get your shot, and today you had a chance. You know, and it couldn't have come on a better day. Uh, Sean hurt himself, and they told me I had to step up, and that's what I did. You know, got blessed a little bit, and it worked out. If, if you could, could you walk me through the one touchdown catch over in the corner that Matt was so impressed with? Well, you know, um, I ran a post corner and he just jumped hard inside and he threw it over the top and I, you know, I just knew I was going to catch it. I didn't know how, but, you know, I just brought it in. So Congratulations good. on a great game and being MVP. Back up to you guys. And he's wearing the Davis clan cover. of applause to Ernie Stauntner and the Frankfurt Galaxy for making it a great game. And now I'd like to ask Oliver Luck, the president of the World League, to really give a round of applause to the, to the Scottish Claymores and Jim Steiner. The new champions. Bowlers, head coach Jim Kreiner, you have brought the World Bowl to Edinburgh. You are the 1996 World Bowl champs. Please raise the trophy high. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't say enough about the tremendous support that we received from Mike Keller and the administrative staff, from the coaches, the players, but very much especially from you. Thank you very much from the football team.